County Sports, the official local football podcast. We are brought to you by The Shoe Fashion, Kingdom Yards Productions, of course, MocoFootball.com. We got a great show lined up for you guys today. Some very special guests stopping by, of course, Matt Miller stopping by. We have Josh Gills from Northwest stopping by, great player, great kid also. We also have Coach Will Gant from Poolsville stopping by. I appreciate him taking time out of his busy day to, you know, talk to us. We also have Calvin Raygar coming on again uh, for the second time. And uh, basically, we're just going to get right into it, man. Thank you for tuning in. Coach, I just want to ask you, you know, what do you attribute all the early success you've had this season? Um, you've won four games. You've already matched the the total that you had last season. And you're in a very good position to have a playoff berth for the first time in a long time in Poolsville. What do you attribute the uh, early success you've had to? The kids, the hard work, or is it just the attitude? It's, it's the kids. They've, uh, you know, it's our second year as a program. And we've got a, a really good group of seniors that have good leadership and are hardworking kids and the underclassmen are, are following their lead. And the kids finally, they believe in themselves. And they go out to practice expecting to get better and improve on, on what they did the night before and the day before in practice. So it's really the kids. They just they, they believe in themselves and they, they think they can go out there and win football games. The confidence is always the big thing. What's the excitement around the school? I'm sure that teachers are probably congratulating you guys a little bit more, a little bit more fan support, man around campus and things like that. What's the excitement around the school about possibly going into the playoffs and overall about the season so far? It's been a lot of fun. The community, you know, it's funny. When I got there last year, the community was behind us last year, even when we were struggling right. early on in the season last year. You know, I had the, the opportunity to coach there a few years back as an assistant and it's a great community. They support our teams, and you know whether we're winning games or losing games, the community support's been great. Community support has been great. Right. You know, with that said, I think it's even you know it's starting to crank up to another level, and you know more and more people seem to be coming back, and you know alumni and, and wanting to come back and see games and see how we're doing and come check out practices and stuff like that. But, you know the school's a buzz. People are really you know they're interested in our sport teams up there and, and how we're doing, and it's been it's been fun to watch. It's been the need to watch the kids get to experience that. Talk about your style of play. If you go out to, if I went out to a Poolsville game, what do I expect to see offensively and defensively? What do I expect to see um, out of you guys? And um, what do you guys like to accomplish? And what do you guys like the opponent to leave with after you face your team? We're, we want to play physical. We want to play fast. You know, we want teams to know that we're going to get after them. Even, you know, we've played a couple of games where we, we took it on the chin and, and lost a couple of games pretty badly. And, you know, even leaving those games, I talked to the other coaches, and they they felt like we at least you know our effort level and we were coming after people. So right. we, you know, we like to play physical. We want to play fast, and uh, you know, we like to have that. We're not going to give up attitude. We really preach to our kids: you're going to get beat once in a while in football, but it's, it's a man that can keep getting up, and when he does get beat, you know, get up and and go win the next play that's going to eventually have success kid that probably epitomizes um, everything you just said, uh, Kirby Carmack. Um, yeah. Talk about this kid and how he's, he's been a leader for your team so far and his involvement in the 4-2 and two record so far and his, and his success going forward. And what kind of leader is he on the team and, you know, getting the troops to rally for the cause? Kirby's a tremendous leader. Um, you know, I, the, the day I got the job last winter, I went over there and saw a basketball game that night, watched him play basketball, and I could just see even the, the kids a year older than him kind of, you know, were taking his lead. He just has that, that yeah. extra factor that I, I can't even put a finger on it, but, you know, people want to follow him. He motivates his teammates. He motivates me and my coaches at times. You know, we all get into the to the season, and it can be a grind, and everybody has a bad day once in a while. And, mm-hmm. You know, Kirby's just he's an upbeat, you know, wants to practice, wants to work hard, wants to do well for his teammates' kids. Um, and he's real good about, you know, when he, he's had success, he, 
you know, he's the first one to compliment his linemen and compliment his, you know, his playing, playing mates and stuff like that. He's just, he's got that extra factor. He's just a great kid. Right. It sounds like he has the Tebow effect on your team. He's, he really does. He really does. You know, he just, the kids, like I said, the kids respond to him. And, you know, there's been times that he's motivated me when I, you know, middle of last season when we were struggling a lot. Right. You know, he actually, he was the type of kid I got to practice. And even though I wasn't feeling great or, you know, feeling good about what we were doing on the field, he would get us going. And it's just, it's fun to be a part of a kid like that. You know, he's, Definitely. He's just, you know, he's a great student, great leader, and, you know, he's a kid you want to watch for the next 20 years. He'll be successful whatever he chooses to do with himself. You guys got a, a very favorable, I, I, I know you're going to hate me saying this, but you guys got a very favorable schedule coming up. You know, don't go Nick Saban on me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a very favorable schedule coming up. Um, how do you guys not overlook your opponents and, you know, look towards the postseason, keep focused on, on the task at hand? week in and week out for the next three weeks? Sure. We, we've really tried to make each week its own, and they really are. Each week is, is, is its own individual week. Right. You know, last, last week we played Mike Full up in Baltimore, and they're throwing the football 35, 40 times a game. So we, you know, defensively had to scheme some things to defend that. Right. This week we play Kennedy. They, they run the football very well. So, right. you know, we almost have to, it almost becomes a, a different defensive scheme each week. And that's how we've tried to approach it, is, you know, all we can do is win, you know, win today's practice. Right. Um, I had the fortune of, of talking to Neil Owens down at Richard Montgomery a little bit. You know, if you read some of his literature, he preaches win the day. Right. And, you know, I kind of, you know, credit to him, but stole that from him. And I you know, really tried to get my kids. All we can do is win, win today's practice, do better in today's practice, and then go win Friday night game. And, you know, let everything else take care of itself. The kids certainly know we have a, a chance at the playoffs, but, you know, if we stop practicing and stop playing and lose the next four, we're not in the playoffs. Right. Right, absolutely. Well, uh, Coach, thank you for your time, man. And yes, anytime you can come on, we love everything that you're doing over here in MocoFootball.com and in the county sports. Yes. And um, any way that we can support you guys, um, let us know. And, um, again, thank you for all the time. If you, if you want any kids to come on the show, man, let us know. Yeah, I think that'd be me. Maybe we can set that up next week. Okay, definitely. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, we're here with Calvin Rhaegar, and uh, he's coming off of a few weeks ago, a great win. You know, I, I want to take you back, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, Calvin, and uh, talk about that QO game and how it felt to knock off QO that night and really make a statement to the county that you guys are the premier team. Right. Um, well, we, we knew a lot of people didn't take we had a chance coming off. Uh, we haven't beaten them in a while. And uh, we, we, we knew we've had them down to the wire. And uh, we've won. We are, we've been winning. All three quarters, it seems like, and in the fourth quarter, they've been able to pull it out. Right. But uh, our goal was to finish, and uh, we were able to actually pull it off in the fourth quarter and actually change it up a little bit. Right. So uh, we, we, uh, we knew a lot of people didn't think we could do it because that picked all against us. They thought every single one of them picked you out to win. Right. And uh, we knew in our locker room that we can do it and uh, came out pretty confident and showed it. First play is actually a big one, and I think it set the tone for the rest of the game. Right, right, definitely. It was a low-scoring game. You know, what is it like to be a quarterback in that kind of game where it's low-scoring? You know, they got divisional players all over the field. What is it like to be a quarterback in, like, a low-scoring defensive battle like that? And how do you keep your composure and keep your teammates up on the sidelines knowing that, hey, it's going to come, the big play is going to happen, we're going to get this game out? Uh, we, uh, I try to just stay patient and uh, to take what they give me and uh, – uh, in my head, the whole time I'm thinking, I hope it uh, works out. But uh, I know I just gotta keep myself cool and collected, and uh, just take it slow, take what they give me. I right. know uh, every single one of my players can make a play out of nothing, so right. I have to hit my check down a hundred times. One of them <laughs> right. Break, at least. Right. So, uh, yeah, just I take it slow, and uh, they actually scored in the fourth quarter, and we were down in the fourth quarter, and it's it kind of a, 
uh, it impressed me the way my teammates responded and uh, like we got even more fired up to go out there and score right. the game and we got we just showed our confidence and that we believe in ourselves. Last week you actually faced your brother. Um yeah. In a game, you know, he was coaching and, and everything like that. How was that like? And what was the trash talk like? You know, after the game, um, saying one of uh, you, you know, your older brother and everything like that. What was the trash talk like? And you know, I'm sure he probably gave you hell, you know, on the basketball court growing up, and you know, and tag football and everything like that. So, how, how did it feel beating him uh, in that game? Yeah, um, there, there wasn't much trash talk. You know, he, he knows we're a good team and. Uh, Rock Rock is struggling a little bit this year, and uh, uh, but he, he does, he does uh, talk a little bit of trash, saying that they got our number this week and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, that's not the major trash talk, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it was actually a pretty funny feeling being able to beat him. Right. And, uh, and seeing that we actually went out to dinner after the game and hung out with him a little bit. It was, it was, it was pretty cool to have that experience. Right, right, definitely. Who's mom cheering for? Your mom have on a Rockville jersey, man. <laughs> uh, well, how's how's the growth of the team since the start of the season to now? Like, what have you seen that the team's improved on, and what would you like to see the team grow a little bit more? Um, well, I think our defense has been stepping up when we need them to. You know, like they played great against QO, uh, held held them, and. Um, I think our offense is developing a little bit more, putting in some new plays still, new formations still, and we're still getting at it. And um, I, I think everybody's like understanding it fully now, and like there's not as many questions at practice, and uh, we're just getting everything uh, sharp at the end of the season. Talk about the Blake game. I mean, they've been on a four-game winning streak. They've been hot. They're very, very confident. Um, I don't know how much film you guys watched so far this week, but um. You know, talk about that game and talk about basically not overlooking them and understanding that this is a good team that you're facing. Right. Uh, we, we, we definitely, uh, everybody's hyped in that Damascus game coming up and uh, we try to stay focused and focus on the task at hand. That's probably right. this week. They're, they're a good team, uh, four and two, I believe. And, uh, they, they have a, they have an opportunity to beat us and, uh, we know they want it to uh, help them out in the playoffs. Right. We're trying to make a run for the playoffs, so uh, can't overlook them. They're gonna give us, they give us their all. Right. We're we're preparing to practice just like we we're preparing the other week, and not overlooking them. Yeah, leave the um hyping up of uh, you know week nine to you know the media members like us, man. You know we'll, we'll go ahead and continue doing that, and you guys continue winning, man. And I hope you guys well. I'm I'm probably gonna be out there uh, this week, you know, to the Blake game. It's just down the street, so. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, um, we'll be out there representing MoCo football and in the county sports, man. All right, thank you, man. I don't know if I... Hi, everybody. We're here with Josh Gills, uh, running back, all-purpose man. Really the Percy Harvin for the... Uh, so uh, the Churchill game was pretty crazy, man. You guys got down early. Um, talk about, you know, the, the mindset and the team when you guys got down and um, how you guys were able to pull yourselves back up and, you know, really uh, rally to get that win. After the game, what was the feeling like, man? I mean, um, you know, I saw you guys at the bus uh, and everything like that. What was the feeling on the bus going home and how you guys feel the next day and everything like that? And what was the emphasis the next week on getting better, um, you know, off of the film that you watched? And uh, what are you guys doing to make sure that the, the first half doesn't happen and the second half is this team that we see from here on out? Talk about that G-Bird game, man, and um, you guys' mindset. Um, it's a Saturday game. It's going to be a little bit tough to get up for. You know, it's a good team, you know what I'm saying, even though they, they've had their struggles. Talk about that game and talk about your mindset going into it and, um, you know, basically how you're going to attack them.
Right. And talk about your role in the team, man. You got a really interesting role in the team. You um, have to be one of the main wide receivers um, because of the, how much you guys pass the ball. And you, you also have to be the main runner on the team. You guys, and you return kicks and punts. So just talk about your mindset going into games, knowing that a lot is going to be let rested on your shoulders. You know, just talk about how you approach um, each game. Okay, we're back with Matt Miller from MocoFootball.com. And Matt, let's just get right into it. Crazy week this week. We had, you know, comebacks and everything like that with the Churchill Northwest game. It was a huge win for Northwest, probably one of the bigger wins in probably about three or four years. Just speak on how the playoffs, our landscape for the 4A, and um, also speak on the win for Northwest and how that might affect Churchill going down the line. Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh all accounts, the, the, the game, Churchill came out uh, not nearly uh, the 17th half of it, but uh, Eddie Callahan uh, you know, led the charge by the Jaguars to come back. Uh, probably his uh, statement game, um, you know, so far in his senior year, big win at Churchill. Um, you know, I think it puts Northwest right in position for the uh, number two seed um, in a home playoff game in the first round if, they, if you know, everything falls into place for them. Right. Which, uh, you could see a rematch against the same Churchill team. Right. Um, you know, it, that, that's the way things are going. So it was a big game, uh, you know, big performance by Maddie Callahan and uh, Northwest. You know, I mean, their, their schedule isn't, uh, you know, is one that lines up for them to, to move into that second seed. I mean, uh, Churchill will need some help from some other teams, but they're buying there too. So it'll be interesting, uh, you know, in my opinion. Those two teams should still fall into the second and third slots, and uh, you know probably battle it out to see who travels to Court Georgia the next week. You know we've had some crazy upsets, some surprises, and um, just talk about Blake and Poolsville. Um, they're both four and two, kind of surprising everybody. You know, out of those two teams, first and foremost, which team do you think has the best chance of sustaining what they they're doing so far? And talk about you know them individually. Uh, Blake and Poolsville. Yeah, I mean, both teams are, uh, you know, been impressive. They're 4 and 2. I haven't had a chance to see either team this uh, year yet. Hopefully, I'll get to see Blake this week and uh, they host uh, number one Seneca Valley. But, uh, you know, I mean, Blake's been good. They've played four uh, teams that are, you know, are all pretty good teams. I mean, they've beaten Watkinsville, who's solid, and they've beaten Wooten, who's, uh, you know, on the upswing. So, uh, Win four in a row, no matter who your opponents are, it's impressive. Um, I mean, they did drop, you know, two early on against their two toughest opponents in Northwest and Sherwood. Since then, they've been rolling. I mean, you know, I don't know if they'll get their fifth win in a row this week in Seneca Valley, but I mean, you know, there's been bigger upsets. So, you know, Blake's a good team. I mean, they're proving that last year was no fluke. And, uh, I think as of right now, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they're, uh, they're also, if things go right, they have a chance to, in at the third or fourth slot in the uh, right. fourth court. So uh, that would be huge. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't believe that Blake's ever made the playoffs. No, they haven't. They so, haven't. Uh, that would be a uh, you know, huge uh, huge deal for them. I mean, they've had the coach Mazzaro has uh, been getting some grief on the local football conference <laughs> for over the last couple of seasons. Right. And basically proving that Dowd is doubt wrong and he's winning games. Um, right. What would you ask for? They have a chance in every game. Right. Um, I have to run the ball and control the clock against Seneca Valley, but um, you know, I don't know if they're at that level yet, but they're definitely going to try. Um, as for Poolsville, Poolsville is, you know, I, I think by, by many accounts, a surprising 4 2. They did have a lot of their better players from last year return. Um, I saw them a couple times last year. I haven't seen them this, yet this year, but I know a lot of the, the players on that team uh, from last year. Right. They had a huge loss. First 
week to Watkins Mill, but they came back with a surprising victory over Richard Montgomery. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've even beaten even beaten Walter Johnson, who has a, a pretty good squad himself. So, um, right. Bulls' little schedule is pretty uh, probably one of the easiest left in the in the. Yeah. Like Catoctin and Rockville. So. Mm-hmm. You can see, Bulls are at eight and two, and I'm sure they'll they'll uh, hopefully try for a. Um, you know, Kind of host a, a playoff game in the two A. Right. Um, you know, Poolsville's schedule, like you said, is is pretty favorable. Um, you know, the last few opponents are one and five, one and five, uh, three and three, and one and five. So um, there's a very good chance that they could win out and possibly, like you said, host a playoff game. And I'm I'm pretty sure that'll be a huge thing for that program. I'm looking at uh this week's slate of games, of course you, you talked about that huge game, Blake versus Seneca Valley. Uh Blake is on a huge roll right now. Seneca Valley, of course, is the top team in this county. Proved it uh, a few weeks ago by knocking off QO. Talk about that game, what you expect from that game. Do, do you see a way that Blake can exploit any weaknesses that you've seen from Seneca Valley? Or do you think expect this to be another, you know, dominating uh win for the Screaming Eagles? I don't want to say that Screaming Eagles can dominate because like I said earlier, anything can happen, but I, I would, I would say the Screaming Eagles are a huge favorite. Um, you know, you know, with, uh, with Blake's success, uh, you know, like I said, their opponents haven't been, uh, tremendous, but they, they've still won four in a row. I don't know if they're on that level of, uh, Seneca Valley, because I know that they're, they're likely not, um, with their losses that they've had this season. But I mean, Seneca Valley's not, I don't think Seneca Valley is going to go in there and, you know, just run them over. Right. And, and, and they're, uh, you know, they're going to put up some points, I believe. But um, I, I fully expect Seneca Valley and, and Coach Fred Kim and his staff to have uh, a game plan to beat uh, beat Blake. Uh, like I said, I hope to go out there and, and check out Blake. I'm intrigued by them, and uh, I just want to see what they have to offer. Right. And also, this week, we got a few interesting games when it comes on to, you know, playoff implications and everything like that. PCC and Wounds, one of them. Yeah. I, like, uh, I think that game could be uh, an interesting one. I mean, um, I think, um, you know, the winner of that game mm-hmm. have, a, have, have the inside track for uh, a four seed. Um, right. He's, he's sitting at four and two, and they've got, they're another team with a, with a pretty favorable schedule the rest of the way, but, um, and they should be favored in this game. But Wolves three and three, they're not, you know, you know, they're not a bad team. And you know, if they pull out the victory, that gives them a that gives them a fighting chance. Right. You know, this late in the season. And um, you got Northwest at Gaithersburg. Gaithersburg lost to Clarksburg last week, which was a little bit of a surprise. So you know that they're going to probably come out kind of pissed off. Um, it's at Gaithersburg, so it's going to be a Saturday game. So Northwest, that's a huge game for them. They got a versus Gatesburg. Um, you got Sherwood at Springbrook. Springbrook also is going to be coming in kind of ticked off too because you know they lost a um, they dropped the game versus Blair that nobody's really expecting. So um, those two games keep an eye out, I think, um, for any possible weird things happening because you know weird things have happened in this county. Another game I'm uh, interested in is you know Clint Orchard at Richmond Montgomery. You know Clint Orchard uh, right. is a little banged up. I mean. They're a powerful team. They're deep. They're talented. But Rich Montgomery, if I'm not mistaken, is also uh, four and two. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, they've beaten the teams that they should have beaten. They've lost to the teams that they you know, probably should have lost to, with the exception of Pulso. I mean, Rich Montgomery has, you know, could be five and one right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, it, it, it's an intriguing, intriguing, intriguing game. I mean, Rich Montgomery has a um, dual threat quarterback in Steven Burchett. Right. And, uh, his ability to run and pass might, uh, you know, might, you know, be called the promise for Clint Orchard. I mean, I, I'm just intrigued by it, really, because uh, Rich Montgomery, you know, they have a shot to be, uh, you know, one seven or eight games this year. Right. And uh, at that fourth spot, so it could be a potential uh, first round playoff matchup. So I, I just want to see how the, the Rockets, uh, see how much they've improved and see how well they do against the, the mighty Clint Orchard defense. Right. We got the lead eight up. Uh, today, for Seneca Valley is at number one for second straight week. Damascus, number two. Quince Orchard, uh, number three. Uh, Sherwood, number four. Northwest, number five. Churchill, number six. Blake, number seven. And Watkins Miller, number eight. You know, what was your Elite Eight? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, my, my top 
seven were pretty much the exact same as uh, the top seven you read there. Um, it's pretty, at this point in the season, it, it gets a little easier to figure out who the, who the eight best teams are in the county. Um, right. Eighth is always a revolving door. I threw Rich Montgomery in there. Right. Um, Watkinsville. Um, just because, you know, I, you know, I, I think they're you know, a pretty solid team. I think they're well coached. Coach Owens is, uh, you know, three or so years he's been there, he's gone from zero wins his first year to, uh, Possible playoff berth in his third year, so I mean, some big things there. They, they have, um, you know, they have like I spoke on just a few seconds ago. They have a chance to um, play Clint Orchard Cup and make a game of ground on the, the rest of the top eight. Um, also, I had Blake at seven. We've talked about them already. Um, they, they play number one Seneca Valley, and if they can, you know, if they can play them tough and, and get closer, if they pull off the shocking victory, we'll move way up the charts. I did move uh, Churchill down after their loss to Northwest. Right. Um, even though they're, you know, they're, I still think, you know, perhaps the second best team in the 4A West. Maybe you know, the third after Northwest is just beating them. But uh, I moved them down from, I think I had Churchill at four, and I moved them down to uh, six. six because of the, because of the loss. But, uh, right. the top five are the same. Seneca, Damascus, Quince Orchard. Those three teams are the, uh, you know, I think they're they're much better than, than the other five teams in the top eight. Much better than the rest of the teams in the county for that matter. Right. Those teams have the best shot, in my opinion, of winning a uh, state championship and bringing it back to Moco. Yeah, I, the top three teams right now are probably going to be staying the top three for for the remainder of the year. And I think that, like you said, they have the best chance of bringing back a uh, championship to Moco three. But you know, you never know. Uh, a Sherwood team could get hot. A, a very, very talented Churchill team could get hot. You know, last year they almost beat QO. QO had a very, very good team. I really do think that, you know, they're the next three, I, I guess you could say, which is um, Sherwood, Churchill, and Northwest, I, I think they, they have great shots at, um, you know, on a given Friday, uh, beating one of those teams. Um, you look at Churchill, they had a very good shot at beating um, Seneca Valley. You know, Northwest, they played both Seneca Valley and QO. The scoreboard looked pretty lopsided, but if you watch the games, they, they were moving the ball down the field on, on both teams. Any given Friday, those three teams, I believe, could give top three a little bit of a challenge. But, you know, I, I do agree with you. That top three is pretty solid. I think that that's a very good, you know, three teams that we have in this county. And, and they're one of them has to go play this for the year to stop the MoCo drought. <laughs> Yeah. But like with those three teams, I mean, if you look at them, I, I think about three things in when it comes to playoffs. Uh, you know, just experience, um, whether it's the coaches, for the coaches and players. I mean, all three teams, Seneca Valley, Damascus, and Clint Orchard have, um, you know, three of the best coaching staffs. You know, not only in Montgomery County, but in, in the entire state. They also have uh, experienced uh, senior um, leading teams that that have you know, made it to the playoffs before and know how to get there. Um, the Quince Orchard coming off their loss last year in the state championship. They definitely know how to, how to get there. Lastly, I mean, defense, playoffs, uh, you know, yeah. really the good defenses can stop, like, the high powered offenses or the high powered, uh, rushing attacks. You know, by all accounts this year, all three teams, uh, have had solid defenses, so. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Let's hope one of them, uh, pulls through. I mean, we still have a long way. I mean, that's, that's still seven, uh, what is it, eight weeks away from now, mm-hmm. so. Um, anything can happen before then, but, now. Right. And talk about elite teams, man. Um, you know, you were at the DeMatha Good Council game. We all know that it's a huge game in this uh, state and a huge game for MoCo, too, because a lot of the MoCo kids play for, uh, well, really both teams, but but mostly for uh, Good Council. Um, so talk about what you saw in that game, man, and, um, you know, how good is Good Council? How good is DeMatha? And, um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, there was this whole slate of Montgomery County public schools that I could. Uh, Friday, but I had to go over to Albany to see uh, the good council and, and the math play. I mean, both teams are you know, premier in, in this area and throughout the country, and uh, there's, a, there's a ton of talent on the field. We actually had, uh, um, you know, it was, it was a big game. It was a, you know, a slower game. You know, I think uh, sometimes uh, the coaches like to hold back a little bit, you know, right. to wait for the WCAC playoffs. But the you know, good council fair prevailed with a 13 to 10 win. I mean, the offense struggled, uh, you know, mightily all, all the game, even throughout the game. Um, you know, QB 
see White, White Marshall didn't play well. Um, he struggled to find an opening. He did have some, some passes that were dropped. But, um, um, stud linebacker Dorian O'Daniel, running back, also the running back, uh, went out in the second, I believe it was the first or second quarter, with a shoulder injury. He was out for the remainder of the game. And, um, the good counsel just, you know, honestly struggled to move the ball while he's out. But they, they still have plenty of players. They had, um, you know, Ken Fuller, who's going to Virginia Tech to play cornerback. He had a 75 yard, you know, on return to one of the best uh, plays I've seen all year. Right. And, uh, you know, the council's defense, I think, had two or three more interceptions and a handful of sacks, and they pulled out the victory. I mean, Tamap is a good, good team. They have a good passing offense. They didn't show a whole lot um, running the ball, but they have a quarterback who's, who scrambles and is capable of making throws as well. So, um, you know, I fully expect to see them. Teams rematch each other in the WCAC championship, and hopefully, uh, Daniel's healthy by then. And, uh, it'll be, you know, the outcome could be different. It could be a, a larger um, scoring difference, or, or the math that, is, like I said, is capable of, uh, you know, pulling upset. So, right. we'll see. It was fun. Um, you know, I like to check check out the, you know, WCAC teams once in a while, but, you know, my roots are uh, in the public schools, and I'll be back there again on the sidelines this week. Absolutely, we missed you last week, man. We missed you. So, uh, it'd be great to get you back, um, over to our side. And, um, you know, um, I, whenever you decide which game you're going to go to, I'm sure it's going to be a great game. And, uh, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for calling in. And, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the sidelines re- representing Moco Football, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. As always, anybody can, uh, talk to me by Twitter, uh, Matt Miller, 8389, or, uh, send me a message on MocoFootball.com. Thank you.